Okay, here's our seventh lecture. We're gonna continue on um, the metric topology. So, so let's do some review and some summary, okay? So, the subspace of a metric topology, so if we restrict a subset of x, and we restrict um, the distance function, and this is again a metric, right? So we can have a, like a subspace metric topology. And we also know that metrizable means it is Hausdorff. Well, this is really easy to check, right? Because the x, they have y, is pick a two neighborhoods, right? Um, all right, let me just, and then you have, no, no, no. And then you have, this is d, x, y, right? And then you pick, the neighborhood the the length to be equal to right so this is d of x y and it divided by two right so they're disjoint okay so this is Hausdorff and um for product topology we know that if it's finite and it is countable, then it is metrizable. Okay, let's go further. Let's go. We can focus on um about continuous functions. There's a like a good deal to be said, right? So, so we're gonna discuss about continuous function with metric topology, and this is gonna occupy our uh, the rest of the section. <laughs> so first. Where the f be from x to y, and they're metrizable with two metrics, so the continuity is equivalent to this statement. Okay, so f x and epsilon, and where x is delta, such this is true. This is like a standard epsilon delta definition for continuity and analysis, right? And the topology, in topology, we say oh, it is metrizable, and we have a the continuous function define like more topology and it, it coincides with our analysis definition right so for this direction so we consider this right so you have this open right then we consider this and this is open in x in the neighborhood of x right <coughs> well if this is a neighborhood of x, we can find a delta neighborhood such as containing this. Now, if y is in this neighborhood, then fy is in this. Right? Okay, so this direction, we're done. And for the reverse direction, if it has an epsilon delta definition, right? So, we let y, v open in y, and we will consider the inverse image of v under f. And we pick a point, and this... Mm, and then uh, immediately we have this, right? So if we have this ball is a subset of V, then we know that there exists B and so this is open and white, right? And this is a so B is a neighborhood of FX. So we can find a epsilon neighborhood of FX about v then for the epsilon delta requirement right then we can have a this such that this is true right it's like this one right so we have this in place this subset of this now for this is a neighborhood of x right and it's contained and this is a subset of this. So this is a neighborhood of little x contained in this, right? So f is continuous. Why? Because we have v open and y, right? <laughs> and for any x in this, we have a neighborhood that is contained in this, which means that which means that this set is open, right? And metric topology. 
so it's continuous so in metric topology okay so here again we'll continue with our um, sequence lemma so this is like a relationship between the the convergence sequence and uh, the closure of sets right <laughs> Well, okay, so we let x be a topological spaces, and if there's a sequence of point A converges to x, then it is in the closure. And the converse holds if x is metrizable, right? So we suppose that we have x and converge with x, and there's a sequence in A. And this statement means that all neighborhood of x contains an element of x n, which means that all neighborhood of x intersects A, right? If all neighborhood of x intersects A, that means that x is in the A closure. So this direction, we're done. And for this direction, if x is metrizable, right, then we let x be in this, well, um, so uh, we pick at x n in this neighborhood, right? Then x n converges to x. So for u become a neighborhood of x, right? We can find um, okay. So there's something missing right here. We pick x n be in this and also in A, right? Because it is in the closure. So every neighborhood of X intersects A as with some element. And we let Xn be the element, okay? Then Xn covers the X, like very simple, right? Because for every neighborhood U of X, right? We can find this. And then this is by the Archimedean property, right? Then we can find this, right? And also for any n, right? They're like, this is true for any n, right? So we're done with the sequence lemma. And also for this theorem, if s is continuous, then every convergent this covers fx. This is like the sequential characterization, but is in the general uh, topology spaces. And the converse holds if x is metrizable. So for this direction, if f is continuous and x n converges to x, but what we want to show is this is true, right? Okay, so we let v be a neighborhood of fx. So this is a neighborhood of x, right, by, by continuity. If this is a neighborhood of x, then we know that We have this, right? So for this neighborhood of X, we have this such that this is true because we have this, right? Okay, with that being said, then we have this for any N, that means that this for any this, right? So we let V be a neighborhood of X, we exist N such that this, for exist N such that this is true, right? For any X N, what well, this precisely means, this is true, right? And the converse is that, okay, so we let A be an X. And then if we show this, then as F is continuous, right? Okay, so we, we pick a point in the A closure. So by the sequence lemma, then we we can find a sequence in A such that this converges to X. So, um, so F, X and converges to FX by our hypothesis, right? By our hypothesis. So, each FX in, in, is in F of A, right? So, um, 
fraction is in f of a. So fx is in a closure of f of a. This is something to do with the with the intersection, right? Because um, <coughs> if f is in the closure, right, then we can find this. So this converges this, right? And each of f of x n is in f of a. So, by our sequence lemma, right? Each of f of x in is in what? f of a, right? So the sequence of f of x in is in f of a right and by our sequence lemma right by our sequence lemma so this is in the a closure right fx is yeah the by our sequence lemma i'm sorry i'm kind of slow today so fx in the closure of f of a right but this is true right so this is a subset of this And we're done, so f is continuous. Okay, but here is our remark. So for the proof of the last two statements, all we need is a countable with a countable ball or a countable basis about x. We didn't use the full strength of a metrizable space, right? So this leads to a new definition is that point of x if so we have a x in a topology space right so if there exist accountable neighborhoods of x such that for any neighborhood we can find a u in and the sequence such that it is contained in u right so first countable means that x has a countable basis at all x right so countable basis means that okay so for this point we have a, uh, a, a countable basis such that for any neighborhood you can find this right so we back to our sequence lemma for our converse right if x is just first countable we can replace this ball with this and you can look at the proof, right? So the proof is basically, oh, for each n, we pick x n and this, then this is true. Why? Because for any u neighborhood of x, we can find this, right? And for any n greater than n, this is this, right? Because because u n is one of the members, so their all intersection is a subset of u n and a subset of u, and we pick x and b and this, right? So, so this, for any we have this for u neighborhood of x, so this, right? And the theorem twenty one point three remains unchanged. This this remains unchanged because this is using the sequence lemma, and the sequence lemma is only only using the first countable theorem, so. So yeah. Okay, so here is another um, lemma. So the addition, subtraction, and multiplication operations are continuous functions. And the quotient is continuous. So here's the proof. Um, you can analyze it a bit on your own. I don't have, I would just, I just skip this time. So I'll skip this. Okay, so we back to our more important thing is called um, uniform convergence, right? So we, I think, I assume all of you guys know what is a uniform convergence. If it's not, you can just read this, right? So, it converges uniformly to the function. It's like we have a, given any epsilon, we have an n, such that 
this is true for all n and all x. Okay, so this big N holds for all n and all x. This is like a uniform convergence. Okay. And so the uniform limit theorem is that we can interchange limit, right? So if this is a sequence of continuous functions and it converges uniformly, then the limit function is also continuous. Right? And this is a standard proof. I think we all walk through this in analysis and we just do this again for completion. So we feel that VP open a Y, right? We let X naught be in this. And what we want to do is that we wish to find a neighborhood of U such that F U is subset of V. So this is this is equivalent as saying F is continuous, right? Because Right? For any x naught in the inverse image, we can find a neighborhood u, u such that this is true, then f is continuous. This is an equivalent uh, equivalence uh, condition, right? I think is in uh, somewhere. Yes, for lecture four, I think is somewhere here, right? each x and each neighborhood is the neighborhood of x such that this is true right okay so back to this so this right we have an epsilon because v is open right we're going to pick a thesis element and this is by the uniform convergence and this is by the fact that fn is continuous, right? And then we combine all these three together. We combine all these three together. This is a fact of this. This uses this. This uses this. Again, we use triangle inequality, right? Then we have the desired result. And that ends our uh, metric topology session. Goodbye.